Amazon recently introduced Vulcan, the first robot the e-merce commerce giant claims, with a sense of touch, and it is already changing operations while working alongside workers at the company's fulfillment centers. In the middle of 2025, Amazon quietly announced that it had deployed its one millionth robot inside its operations network. In several of its newest fulfillment centers, the number of mobile robots is approaching, and in some cases surpassing, the number of human workers. These sites handle a growing share of American e-commerce orders, while the national unemployment rate sits a little above 4%, and transportation and warehousing continue to add jobs even as hiring momentum slows. The result is a striking picture of the contemporary labor market, a logistics sector that is expanding in headcount, compressing headcount per facility, and weaving dense fleets of machines into the daily routine of work. Over three decades, warehousing employment in the United States more than tripled, rising from roughly 349,000 workers in the early 1990s to about 1.1 million by 2019. As e-commerce reshaped distribution, Amazon became the emblem of that shift. Its 2012 acquisition of Kiva Systems, now Amazon Robotics, turned the warehouse floor into a testbed for mobile automation and algorithmic coordination. Where earlier distribution centers relied on workers walking miles of aisles, the new model pushes shelves of goods to stationary workers via small orange robots guided by barcodes and real-time software instructions. The warehouse becomes less a static building and more a dynamic, networked system. Today, Amazon reports more than one million robots across its global operations, deployed in dozens of types, from autonomous drive units that ferry shelves to machine vision arms that grasp individual items. External analysts estimate that robotics already assist with roughly three quarters of Amazon deliveries. In a typical large fulfillment center, mobile units navigate dense grids of storage pods, routing themselves to avoid congestion, while automated gantries and sortation systems move containers overhead. Human workers stand at pick stations, supervised by handheld devices that dictate the next action, pace, and quality thresholds. This is what a robot city looks like in practice. Not humanoid machines walking past human colleagues, but layers of software coordinating thousands of devices and people in close quarters. The intelligence of this system sits as much in the cloud as on the warehouse floor. Amazon describes new generative artificial intelligence models that optimize robot fleet travel, cutting travel distance, and improving throughput. Forecasting algorithms anticipate regional demand and position inventory before orders arrive. Digital twins model the flow of goods and adjust staffing and routing during peak periods. Taken together, these tools turn the warehouse into a continuously tuned cyber-physical system, where every bin, vehicle, and worker is tracked and scheduled. The underlying logic is straightforward. The tighter the integration of data and motion, the lower the cost per package. The broad pattern fits a longer history of mechanization. In the 20th century, Assembly lines and industrial robots displaced many tasks in manufacturing, but also drove dramatic gains in output and over time in living standards. In the current wave, the task frontier has shifted from factory lines to services and logistics. The McKinsey Global Institute has estimated that around 60% of occupations have at least 30% of their constituent activities that could, in principle, be automated by existing technologies. Automation enters jobs task by task, not job title by job title, and warehouses are among the workplaces where that process is most visible. Labor economists describe a dual effect. Automation substitutes for some kinds of labor while complementing others, raising productivity, and in aggregate, income. A Brookings Institution analysis notes that automation often creates as many jobs as it displaces over time, as lower costs feed through into lower prices, higher demand, and new kinds of work. Yet the same work emphasizes that the transition is uneven, with workers in routine roles, with lower levels of formal education, and in certain regions facing higher risk of disruption. Another Brookings study has suggested that around one quarter of United States jobs could face high exposure to automation, with disproportionate impact on roles in the heartland and on specific demographic groups. Amazon's robot cities sit at the center of this distributional tension. Detailed studies of warehouse work underline how granular the risks are, 
Research from the University of California Berkeley Labor Center reports that over 90% of forklift drivers' tasks and around 80% of packers and packagers' tasks are technically susceptible to automation, while only a small share of tasks performed by general laborers show similar exposure. The same report notes that McKinsey estimates about 57% of activities in transportation and warehousing are automatable, and that Bain and Company forecast that as much as 70% of warehouse job roles could eventually be lost to automation. These projections do not imply that all such jobs will disappear, but they capture a clear direction of travel. More of the repetitive motion and routing is handed to machines, while the human share of work shifts toward oversight, exception handling, and maintenance. In Amazon's case, those shifts are already visible. The average number of employees per facility has fallen to around 670, the lowest level in more than a decade, even as the company's network expands and volumes rise. Bank of America Securities has estimated that robotics and automation could deliver annual cost savings for Amazon on the order of tens of billions of dollars within the next decade. As robots improve accuracy, reduce injury rates, and compress cycle times. At the same time, Amazon highlights new roles, flow control specialists who coordinate material streams, maintenance staff who repair robots, and data technicians who monitor dashboards. Company statements emphasize that over 700,000 employees have been upskilled through training programs that prepare them for more technical roles. The warehouse becomes less a place of pure manual labor and more an environment where a smaller human core keeps an increasingly dense machine infrastructure functioning. The human consequences extend beyond a single employer. Transportation and warehousing added roughly 23,000 jobs in March of 2025, driven in part by ongoing demand for logistics services. Yet national job growth has been noticeably weaker than in earlier years and the unemployment rate has edged up, even as the labor force participation rate improves. Within that aggregate, roles that rely heavily on routine physical tasks, such as traditional picking and packing, or routine cognitive tasks, such as some clerical processing and logistics, carry higher automation risk. Workers whose skills are not easily redeployed face a more fragile position, even when headline employment figures remain stable. Distributional lines are clear. Studies from Brookings and others find that workers without a college degree, younger workers, and many Black and Latino workers are more concentrated in occupations with high automation exposure, including warehouse roles. Amazon's own warehouses employ large numbers of workers from these groups, often in suburban and exurban areas where alternative employment options are limited. Internal documents reported in the press describe ambitious internal targets to automate large shares of warehouse work and reduce hiring needs, even as the company publicly contests specific estimates about planned job replacement. Communities that have grown around a single fulfillment center carry both the benefits of employment and the risk that a future upgrade could sharply cut headcount. Wage dynamics add another layer. Automation tends to boost productivity, which in principle allows firms to pay higher wages or reduce prices. In practice, the distribution of those gains depends on bargaining power, competitive conditions, and policy. McKinsey argues that widespread adoption of automation, including generative artificial intelligence, could raise United States productivity growth to between roughly 3 and 4% annually in a midpoint scenario but it also projects that millions of workers may need to change occupations, with particular pressure on office support, production, and customer service roles. For warehouses, this suggests a slow shift from large numbers of relatively low-paid pickers towards smaller numbers of better-paid technicians and supervisors. The net effect on wages and local incomes depends on how many workers make that transition and how many are left behind. Education and training systems are already under strain from these demands. Technical colleges and workforce programs report increased interest in logistics, technology, mechatronics, and data analytics, but capacity and funding remain uneven. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology Center for Transportation and Logistics describes the warehouse of the future as a highly automated, interconnected environment that leans heavily on digital skills from managing sensor networks to running optimization models. 
That vision assumes a labor force comfortable with hybrid roles that mix physical tasks with basic programming, system monitoring, and coordination. It also assumes that employers invest not only in machines, but in sustained training pipelines. The impact is not confined to blue collar work. Artificial intelligence systems are increasingly embedded in higher skill tasks around the warehouse, from demand planning and network design to pricing and fraud detection. The same generative models that guide robot fleets can summarize operational reports, assist in software development, or handle customer service interactions. The McKinsey Global Institute highlights that professional, legal, and finance roles contain significant shares of activities that are automatable, especially those involving routine document handling and data analysis. The future of work around Amazon's robot cities therefore includes both technicians in safety vests and analysts whose tasks are partially absorbed by algorithms. Global institutions are beginning to quantify the larger arc. The World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs reports estimate that worldwide, tens of millions of roles will be displaced by shifts in the division of labor between humans and machines by the middle of this decade, even as roughly 170 million new jobs emerge in fields such as data, artificial intelligence, green technologies, and care work. A 2025 report on physical AI argues that robots and autonomous systems are on track to become the leading driver of transformation in industrial operations, including logistics. In this framework, Amazon's warehouses function as early adopters in a broader reconfiguration of industrial work, rather than as an exception. Policy debates lag the pace of technical change. Economists and think tanks have proposed measures such as wage insurance, strengthened unemployment benefits, portable benefits for gig and contract workers, and large-scale investment in mid-career training to help workers move into new roles created by automation. Yet public spending on active labor market policies in the United States remains modest compared with many European economies. Programs targeted specifically at logistics automation are rare. In the absence of comprehensive frameworks, local communities negotiate their own trade-offs, trading tax incentives and land use approvals for jobs that may become more capital intensive over the lifetime of a facility. Over the next decade, analysts expect the logic of Amazon's robot cities to diffuse across sectors. The World Economic Forum projects that technologies related to data, artificial intelligence, and physical automation will continue to shape the majority of workplace transformations through the late 20s and early 30s. McKinsey forecasts that tens of millions of United States workers may need to switch occupations by the end of the decade, with the greatest churn in sectors that combine routine tasks, tight margins, and scalable technologies. In logistics, this suggests more facilities in which dense robot fleets handle storage and movement, while smaller, more specialized human teams handle oversight, maintenance, and customer-facing exceptions. The defining feature of this transition is not a sudden disappearance of work, but a quiet redrawing of what work consists of. Amazon's warehouses illustrate that process in concrete form. Jobs are not simply removed. They are broken into tasks, many of which migrate to machines, while remaining tasks are recombined into new roles that demand different skills, different training histories, and different career expectations. The people who thrive in this environment are those whose skills complement automation rather than compete directly with it. Whether through technical expertise, problem solving, or relational work, that software still struggles to replicate. For labor markets, the central challenge is to manage that shift in a way that keeps participation broad and opportunities credible. The technology trajectories outlined by institutions such as the World Economic Forum, the McKinsey Global Institute, and Brookings are not easily reversed. The policy choices that accompany them, from education funding to labor standards in automated workplaces, remain open. The robot cities inside Amazon's warehouses offer a preview of a labor market where machines and people share space in dense, tightly managed systems. The task for the coming decade is to ensure that workers are equipped to move within that system rather than only to watch it from the outside.